Everything's dead. There are no fish in there at all. We're coming into our perch run. That's thousands of dollars. And that we're not going to get any of that. Well, it's a public perception. Do you want to fish in a, it, be it polluted or whatever you want to call it, do you want to fish where there's a lot of dead fish? We're going to, we will overcome that. It will come back. Yeah. It's just, we have to overcome the public perception. I don't understand how it works. The fish were looking for oxygen, millions of them. It's on video and Facebook. And I believe they've all sunk. They will build up gases and come to the surface. I believe what you want to do is be proactive. I'm not going to have thousands of dead fish floating. I'm going to pick them up. Or if I was under the understanding the problem came from them. And they, they've got my business card. They know how to call me. The dissolved oxygen we just tested it here is 0 0.4 milligrams per liter. Fish need 5 milligrams per oh. liter. It was massive. It was just thousands of fish at the surface trying to get air. It was just everything, every species you can think of. Bullhead and perch and minnows and pike. And it was just, it was crazy. Normally, on a regular afternoon, you could sit out there and watch the fish jump. There ain't nothing out there now jumping. There ain't nothing moving around. Uh, business thrives on the fishing and as you can see there's no fishing going on. This is some organic biodegradable material. When this stuff gets into the water it's going to continue biodegrading and that process takes the dissolved oxygen out of the water. It's just the fish are struggling to get that oxygen they need. Uh, but we're basically we're out here checking the DO levels in the water and we're also kind of help and oversee or look at the remediation that uh, Michigan Sugar is doing and then we're going to go over to the plant and we're going to look at their stormwater pollution prevention plan to make sure it's uh, up to date and that they're doing the things they need to do and also help correct the situation so it doesn't happen again. It got in there, they had some uh, what they call their pulp, their beet pulp and they had it uh, on their yard where they usually keep it and then they had a storm sewer line that that they didn't realize was connected to the city storm sewer system. That when it rained or got wet, the organic material off that bee pulp would get into that storm sewer system and, and then just ferment in there basically until another huge rain or something and kind of moved it out. We're going to give these data and information to our manager who is already involved. He knows what we're doing. And our management is going to have to make the decision of what to do next. We haven't issued a, a written violation yet, but one will be forthcoming. Well, I was here when it started. I was part of the, the uh, uh, Harbor Commission when it got started. And I can't tell you the date on that. But I've been a commercial fisherman here in Seabrook for 32 years, and you know we've never had anything like this happen. Before.